24th, 2018, Amber Here. 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 And the minutes from September 10th. Are there any changes? Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any questions of the motion? Roll call. Missouri? Yes. Basil? Yes. Wayland? Yes. Myron? Yes. Charles? Yes. Coach report. Uh, total tax income received since uh, August 27th is $479.22. $479.22.13. Uh, most of that money is real estate tax. Yes, uh, just for your information, the uh, Beecher boys and girls golf teams won both the RVC championship and the Tri Valley championships. So, uh, Where were they held, George? Uh, one was uh, today, we're at Dwight. I think the other one, I don't know where it was. I wasn't at that one. I think it might have been Swami, I think. So, well, congratulations to them. Anyone else who wish, wish to address the board? Finance and Administration, Trustee Basil. All right. Uh, consider authorizing a request for a proposal for auditing services for a three-year period beginning the year ending uh, April 30th, 2019. Our current three-year contract with Lauterbach and Amen is expiring, and there is a need to get a, an auditing firm in place for the next period. Last time we settled on a three-year proposal, but we can choose any length of time we want. Staff would uh, not recommend less than three years or more than five. Please see the enclosed RFP and list of firms to be solicited. So we're going to go out and solicit uh, to those firms. So I guess the only question of the board is you want to go three year, four year, or five year? Right. Well, what's, what did we have last night? Three or three? Three. Is there a benefit of doing it in three years as opposed to just a one to see? I mean, we get a new firm we don't like, and we're stuck with for three years, aren't we? That's how that works. Yeah. And it takes, it takes more than a year yeah. for them to really get to know us. To break them in, yeah. The first year is like a training year. As a learning curve. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily have to take the lowest bid either. This is an RFP process, so the committee can make a recommendation as to what order they want. Can I use a suggestion of a, if I got this right, two year term, which would end at the mayoral? It's pretty I short. Know. I don't know if one should be one farther. You're going pretty short there. I don't know, probably three. I was just curious why. Yeah. I'm just brought the idea of two. What is the benefit of three versus like four or five? Have we ever done anything longer? Oh, How yeah. did that look? Like what happened? Um, we had a five year, I think, with the firm out of Kankakee once. Uh, when Pete Skinger was here, he just did it every year for forever. And then he retired. And then the board decided, because of the Dixon incident, to change auditing firms every so many years, which is probably not a bad idea. Whether it's three or five year, I don't know if it really matters, but you don't want them getting comfortable auditing the records here with the staff. You do want to change that over. Past experience, I remember of an auditing firm that we did not care for because of certain reasons for another, and I would hate to think that we would have in five years. It has nothing to do with what they found. It's just that their their method of doing things uh, is not. We were not very happy. So five's too long and two's too short. So it sounds like three is a happy, <laughs> happy medium. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that the board can extend the contract with a firm beyond three years after. It's right. not through negotiations. This is nothing that's in the end of the doubt. So I guess we could do that with two years also. Yeah, but your first two years are going to charge you up to quasi three years probably. Three years is the So I'd imagine it gets less, co it's more cost effective the more years you have one firm. Yes, because they're used to how you operate in the case. They're not here as long. The first year they'll be here forever. So then I'd be making a motion to go for a three year period. Sounds like you just did. <laughs> All right, I'd like to make a motion authorizing a request for proposals for auditing services for a three-year period beginning year ending April 30th, 2019. Second. Motion on the board, there's a second. Second. There's a second. Yeah, any questions? Roll call. 
Krauss? Yes. Kleiner? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Basil? Yes. Missouri? Yes. And my report. Thank you, public buildings, properties, parks, and recreation. Uh, the last meeting I handed out a photo and uh, uh, we talked about a location for the Todd lot. Has there been any feedback on that um, as far as what we were thinking about doing and also the location? I thought we threw out an idea and Matt wasn't too happy with that idea, but if it was possible to put it to the original location and be careful where we did. Personally, yeah. I like the first, the first ones that we picked rather than the second one. Personally, okay. Just me. When you say first ones, Frank, it was like the seven. Or the, it's seven. A, the first uh, equipment was seventeen thousand two twenty-two, something like that. Oh, the actual, the actual equipment. The actual equipment. Okay. Not the fire truck, but the. Yeah, I like the first one that we had picked. Uh, I liked better than. than okay. About location. Well, you know my feelings on that, so I don't recall. So I, yeah. <laughs> I probably forgot them for a yeah, reason. Yeah, well, we, we kind of <laughs> wanted to keep it up by ball field one and two because of, and yes. I know I know everyone's going to use it, but I think the majority of the people in the park is during the ball games. Yeah, That's think, all I'm thinking. Right. We had a conversation to go back to the original spot, but he's, Matt still has a problem with what's underneath it. Yeah, I mean, the possibility that if he did certain things a certain way, that maybe it could go there. So it's, it's, I don't think that's ruled out yet. I mean, if we can't do it, we can't do it. Yeah, so that's, that was the last conversation. <laughs> okay. And these plans are still for the, the younger age group <coughs> First, to start. Right. So just throwing it out there, um, because again, bigger kids are going to want to play on this too. How hard or how hard do you think it would be to maybe consider holding off until we can add equipment as well that would benefit older children so we're not putting this in and potentially it getting in before yeah. we can add on. Because there's there's got to be signs installed, you know, because the older kids are prohibited from being on there. I mean, they can get hurt on a, on a unit that's too small for yeah. them, you know. Agreed. Um, I mean, we had talked about that at one meeting as far as yeah, coming the up. The problem with waiting until the whole project is funded, you're probably looking at 70 or 80 grand for the entire at project. Least. Yeah, at least. We're only halfway to, to the 17,000. Yeah. So. so what we wanted to do is at least take the first phase and give the kids, the uh, rest of the family somewhere to go if they're not playing ball or if they're too young to at least enjoy the equipment for the first year or two and then plan for the... <coughs> You know, just add on from I there. guess I just think about that because in being at the ball field myself with Christian for this first year, a lot of the kids when they're playing the little exercise equipment we have along the path, they're climbing that, there's you know, right. and I could just see these older kids doing the same thing to this little equipment. Yeah. Just a thought. Okay. Is the site, if we move it back to the original location, can that be expanded? Absolutely. It can. We already have There's plenty of room there. Right. Okay. We already have a full drawing of the the stages, you know, so there's enough room. There. And there'll be enough room between the t-ball field and the path. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll continue on that. We have the update on the police station generator. Project is complete. It's complete. Now we need the bill. Yeah, now we have to pay the bill. Now wait on that. <laughs> uh, line park lights have been repaired and are, and are all working. I guess there's still a uh, ComEd light at the corner of Miller and Gould that still needs to be repaired. Uh, I know there's been several complaints there, so that's that's in the process. And that ends my report. Thank you. Planning building is already open. The building department monthly report is enclosed for your review. Planning and Zoning Commission is going to meet this Thursday, September 27th. Um, we, the Commission will hold a workshop on a special use permit request for a proposed self-contained crematorium at Hack Funeral Home and continue work on the comprehensive plan. That's all I have. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Trustee Cross. Thank you. Uh, the police department EMA and code enforcement monthly reports are enclosed. Any questions on any of those? 
Okay. Uh, the police department is going to conduct fraud prevention seminar for local businesses, 6 p.m. Wednesday, September 26th at Midland States Bank. Skimmers, fake bills, and other fraud prevention <coughs> issues will be discussed. Please see the enclosed flyer. Joint Fire and Police Open House is scheduled for 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. on Friday, October 12th. Penfield Street will be closed from Maxwell to Woodward during this period due to the large attendance and all the equipment being displayed at this event. Halloween trick-or-treating hours will be from 4 to 7 on Wednesday, October 31st. Lions Club will be serving hot dogs in Fireman's Park from 6 to 8 p.m. that night. Mosquito spraying. Matt? I think we got about another week left. The weather's getting colder. Hopefully going to be stop, stop uh, migrating here soon. So. We're going to need a new machine next year, I understand, too, correct? That's correct, mm -hmm. yeah. Consider a resolution establishing a policy for the hiring of full-time sworn police officers. This policy closely resembles what the village will have to follow when it goes over 5,000 in population. It establishes a fair, equitable, standardized process for the creation of a list of candidates to be hired. An outside service is used to conduct most of the testing, with the exception of the oral interview, which are done by a special committee. This committee will be the Public Safety Committee and one resident appointed by the village president. The committee chair will explain the policy in more detail. Um, any other questions? There's, I mean, I've met with the chief, <coughs> the mayor, uh, Trustee Whaling, Bob, uh, too. I mean, we've gone over this a lot. Um, it's a resolution, so it can be adjusted, and more than likely it will. It's, just, it's a new process for us. and. There'll probably be some growing pains, some lessons to be learned, but this is pretty close to what we'd have to do for over 5,000 and state law kicked in with the police and fire commission. Is this just for hiring or for disciplinary as well? It's only hiring. Disciplinary is still covered under their CBA. Does it cover promotions? I don't believe it covers any We have not addressed promotions in this resolution yet uh, for part-time testing. In the resolution, we've covered it, and we have the path we're taking. Uh, but just to get the start of the full-time testing, since that's coming up next month, this is what we're starting at. This is a starting point. There will be add-ons in the future. Um, but this is just a good place to start to get a good base going so we can uh, get a list and hire some time officers. Resolution 2018-10. Motion to adopt resolution 2018-10, establishing a policy for hiring of full-time sworn police officers. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Any questions of the motion? Roll call. Missouri. Yes. Basil. Yes. Whaling. Yes. Fire. Yes. Yes. If. Uh, I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. If I think I would like to, I'm going to make a dirty look here to make the appointment for a motion to make appointment to Joe Terry to the Police Commission concerning the resolution that we just adopted. So I'd like to make that motion. I'd uh, make a motion to appoint Joe Terry. It's to confirm the appointment. To so confirm the appointment for a one-year period. Is that what we said to go by? That's fine. Okay. Um, for a one-year appointment to the, to the Police Fire Commission, or how is it worded? Is it worded? Uh, the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners. Board of Police Commissioners. Oh, sorry. Yep, Board, Board, of Police Commissioners. Board of Police Commissioners. So motion number four, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any questions of the motion? Roll call. Gross? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Basil? Yeah. Missouri? Yes. It's a public body, so when you guys do have meetings, you have to post them. Even though you go into executive session, if you're discussing person. In case anyone doesn't know, this is Joe Terry. <laughs> so if you have any questions, but it's not on the sport. Thank you. Public work for me. Station. Fire Department monthly report is in close to review, as well as the Sewer Department monthly report. Um, for the water billing register, for the months of July and August are in close for your review. Um, we are now getting a better handle on non-billed water since we are now metering an additional 3.8% of unbilled water. The sources of this unbilled water is also a close for your review. 
the future wastewater treatment plant update. Construction is in full swing, and an update will be provided at the meeting. And closed are the meeting minutes from the last progress meeting. So I would imagine the update. They are digging and pouring cement and bringing in the lines. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. At this point, <coughs> it's going to be that way for at least another year. Mm -hmm. And then the Dunbar water main update. Well, we need to do five. Oh, yeah, I we got to vote on that one. Sorry. He has a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Consider a payment in the amount of $4,489,974.79 to IHC pending receipt of IEPA loan funds as a progress payment, number one, on the Beecher Wastewater Treatment Plant Project. Is there in the form of a motion? I make a motion to consider the payment in the amount of... $489,974.79 to the IHC pending receipt of IEPA loan funds as a progress payment number one on the Beecher Wastewater Treatment Plant Project. Motion number four, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any questions? Motion. Roll hey, uh, Berserk? Yes. Basil? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Minor? Yes. Krause? Yes. Dunbar Water Main Update. Uh, they failed their pressure test in the 500 block, but passed everything in the 600 block. They've been digging the last couple days looking for their leak in the 500 block, and so far have unable been able to find it. So they're continuing that. I think they got rained out today, and it sounds like they'll be rained out tomorrow also. So they failed the pressure test. Yeah, they got a leak somewhere. Oh, boy. With the directional board, they're having trouble finding Holy exactly which... Pipe is leaking. So. I have never heard of a test failing. Okay. Yep. Something didn't seal right. Yeah, two days now they've tried and yeah. So we're gonna have to be rude out there. Are they yeah, they're gopher in holes right now all oh, over. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, crack ceiling update. Bids were solicited by an advertisement and by direct mail and no bids were received. We were told that the time of the year and the low amount budgeted for the work were the reasons for getting no bids. The committee has decided to defer the project until the next budget year and take bids in the spring for a larger dollar amount to be determined later. So pretty much we had 25000 No one really wanted to bid on that. Um, we're going to hold that money and do an appropriation to put that into next year and do bids for 50000 and perhaps continue that practice of doing this every other year versus every year. Anybody has any questions? Okay. Consider a motion authorizing the payment of $8,922 to Perino Brothers Concrete from the Nantucket Cove escrow amount account for the installation of concrete foundations for cluster mailboxes. It has come to our attention that this work was never performed by the developer. But when the new homes are being built, there is no box available to deliver the mail to. The developer installs the concrete, and the post office purchases and installs the boxes. The post office is ready to install, but someone has to put in the boxes. Since this was a developer responsibility, the use of escrow funds is appropriate. It is recommended that this motion be approved. So I make a motion to consider a motion authorizing the payment of $8,922 to Perino Brothers Concrete from the Nantucket Cove escrow account for the installation of concrete foundations for cluster mailboxes. Motion on a four. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any questions on the motion? Roll call. Krauss? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Whalen? Yes. Hazel? Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Gould Street Boardwalk Ceiling Update. Work is complete, and only one day of drying time was required. Matt, you have anything yeah. else? Not really. There was minimal, um, you know, issues with the businesses up there. The boardwalk was back open by 3 p.m. And this would be an every other year project. Yeah. At this point, that's what it's looking at. Like. Uh, Perino's completed both curb and sidewalk program for this year. 
and it's done. I just recall the sack preliminary design for Fireman's Park. Encloses a diagram showing a small cul de sac and a larger cul de sac for truck turnarounds. This is for discussion only at this time. Question on that or any questions? Do we oh. know what the size of the ambulance is? I know I was reading the, the notes and some were determined, trying to determine you the can, size of the turn. You can get out of there with a three point turn. The larger closed sack would accommodate a full circle turnout, but the smaller closed sack would accommodate a three point turn. It's probably better than what you have there now, anyway. So the smaller one would definitely be a lot less expensive and a lot less evasive as far as taking. But without the chairman here tonight, I'll probably wait a month and put on the October meeting. For this yeah, month. from what I understand, it's really kind of on the back burner right now. There's mm -hmm. really, it's not in the budget for this year. More um, interest in getting a design. How did basically. this all start? <laughs> Where you get about an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Officially, no. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would say that within the next month, ask the chairman of the committee about it. Or, yes, I just, I looked at, I looked at the estimate, and that's. Was it 203, 208, 200, yeah, I mean, just over yeah. 200 grand to spend? I didn't expect it to be that yeah. much. There's a lot of stuff that can get done in this town mm -hmm. for 200 grand. That's not a, a turnaround, not an offshoot of a. Right now, the issue that's there is more of a police problem, and the police are going to have to handle it until we do anything with that call to say. Oh, yeah, the police are fine with it. They're good. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chief, I don't know if we are explaining the history to you. If we did, just come and see us. Okay. Penfield Street project update encloses a draft of an article for the fall newsletter which provides the tentative schedule of where we are at with this project. Please note that the public information workshop and open house on the project is scheduled for Wednesday, November 7th at 7 p.m. at the Village Hall to engage the residents and businesses that live along Penfield Street. Um, as co-chair, I would like to bring something additional. That was November 7th meeting. The people who live along Penfield Street and the businesses along there will be personally invited by letter to attend the meeting. The meeting will be set up as a workshop, which is similar to our conference plan, where there will be stations where they can visit, they can write their comments down. Uh, it won't be a public hearing per se, but there will be plenty of opportunities for them to review the maps, talk one on one with the engineers, and provide their comments. The IDOT has found out this works so much better than a public hearing where certain people take up all the time speaking and not everybody <coughs> can provide the input. So that's how we're going to do this one and it's required by IDOT to be it this way. Uh, inside the packet that was handed out tonight, you'll see drafts of the letters. You'll see a draft of the public notice that will be in the newspaper. you also see the detour plan that they're planning during construction. Uh, the project will be phased in. The off-site parking facilities will be built first. Then the plan is to work on the south half of Penfield and the north half of Penfield will remain open and westbound only. So it would be like a one-way street, so people can still access their driveways. When the south half of Penfield is complete between Dixie and the railroad tracks, they will flip that to the north side for construction, and the south side will be one-way westbound. Not eastbound, westbound. So both, both ways, so not, not to confuse the residents. You just, during construction, go to Dixie and come up Penfield that way. Um, It'll take some training of the residents and some education. The, the problem logistically we're going to have is how do we get the school buses in and out of the grade school? That's a big concern. And also the fire department. How do we accommodate the fire department? Uh, we are going to deal with that during phase two design, not during the phase one environmental process. So I'm sure we'll get a lot of comments regarding that. You have a church along there, post office, people that get the post office, police department. It's going to be a nightmare. So. You're on notice, 2020 gets going to happen because we were advised at the last transportation meeting that all projects have to be underway by 2020 or the funding is lost. Because a new five-year plan is going to come out and then you have to reapply for those funds. So we are going to go in 2020. There's no turn back. So if there's any questions, let me know. My name's on everything, so I'm going to get all the blame if you notice. I guess we'll burn that bridge when yeah. we get there. <laughs> Figure it's going to be speaking. Um, okay, and then I'd like to make a request for closed session to discuss personnel. 
the hiring of two full-time and two part-time employees in the Public Works Department at the end of the meeting. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. They're going to have a spell of interesting one. Uh, fall newsletter update. Uh, the deadline is approaching for articles to be submitted, and apparently we sold quite a few ads, so it's going to be a large newsletter. <laughs> That's a good problem. Good. It is a good problem. Yes. Um, do you know the target mailing date? Um, I'm looking at um, the week of October 15th. Okay. Do we have articles now? Does it look like you have enough? Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, quiet zone update. The village president and administrator can provide an update. In about the last week or 10 days, we've got a lot of dialogue back and forth between the engineer, HR Green, uh, the village, the railroad, uh, FRA, Federal Railroad Association, or administration, 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 or agency, whatever it is, uh, the Commerce Commission, and uh, the railroad itself has been contacted of our intent. Uh, right now, the preliminary plan that was submitted by the engineer has been read without any comments at this particular point in time, so what we're waiting for right now is to schedule an on-site visit out here between all the parties involved, and we'll, we're moving along, we're moving along pretty good right now, so keep, keep you informed. Okay. A TIF district update, the feasibility study should be completed in the coming month, and then the village president will appoint a TIF review board to review the report. This will be discussed further next month. It's hard to discuss when the report <laughs> Sesame Centennial update. Work is beginning on the book, and the committee is currently <coughs> working on and reviewing an ad purchase policy, which, which will be shared with the board next month. And I know I spoke to Shirley, and uh, she <coughs> says that they are busy at work painstakingly going over every single bit of details to try to get everything involved in this that should be. They're doing a lot of labor. So. Um, consider a motion approving an amount not to exceed $15,000 for the hiring of a guest speaker to encourage communication between generations. I don't have to argue that that's not quite the purpose, but I'll get there. Um, enclosed is a proposal from Br Bridgeworks, Inc. for such a program, which is $10,000 plus travel expense. It's believed that $15,000 should be more than enough to cover the cost of this program. At this time, the village president is trying to obtain commitments from other local governments and the chamber, and an update will be provided. The village board could also propose a lower amount of funding if it so desires, if other matching funds are committed or a less expensive speaker is found. And I know you gave me some information from when you were down at the IML <coughs> that there are other speakers available as well and researching yes. some of those. We, I have actually a conference call with one of them Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Um, it's a multifaceted uh, thing. I know you won't mention, uh, I did that for forever, encourage communication between generations. What it is is how do you market to those people mm -hmm. the, from the chamber's perspective? And how do we communicate with them and engage them in civic participation? That would be those that have, they're, they're saying that that age is, if they were born in uh, 1982 or sooner, would be the break off, is where, which would be about age 30, 35. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's the target group. That, yeah. And I know, um, John was, is, is, I'd rather put this off till John is back. He's extremely committed to doing this, and I have to agree with him 100%. I think the only spot where maybe, it's not that I disagree, I have a, a, a different thought on it is, um, he was looking at this as part of our strategic plan going out, you know, 20, 30, 40 years to kind of get a handle on what these different generations are looking for. I could argue that when you start looking at baby boomers, um, we were kind of a, a riotous group back in our day, and then suddenly we became the man. So as you get a little bit older, you have a tendency to kind of slow down and have different views on things. I would say if you're looking towards millennials and looking at what they're interested in, I'm thinking it's actually a little more urgent. You'd be interested in the next five to ten years. My daughter, according to most of them, is technically a millennial. She's 34. You know, 20 years from now, she's going to be 54. She's going to be part of a completely different generation. So you're looking at people that are about to start growing up and having their kids. Once they have their kids and settle down, and you know, it, it's different goals. I would think we would be more interested in the next five to ten years to kind of attract that group here and see what they're interested in, since they're not quite as vocal too, and that's where the communication comes in. And as far as funding, I have been, I have discussed this with each individual tax body. I have not gotten <clears throat> any no's, but I have not gotten any yeses at this particular. Time, but some of them I indicated, which I 
suspect it was going to be the problem. They weren't going to have a meeting by tonight. So if we postpone them for table and so to speak, that will give us them more time to respond to us after their meetings. I've also reached out to the college, Prairie State, and they may have someone that could help us in that facet, and it may be free. So <laughs> and we do have, uh, so. we gave Marcy and I thought about what I'm lying. Uh, there are less expensive options out there. Again, it's just, it's, we're all doing the research. This gives us more time to do the research. Too. Yeah. So. And like I says, I don't know that it's as urgent because this originally started as part of that plan. Um, I'm thinking it's actually almost kind of the plan goes too far out for what we're looking at, but I still think, it, I mean, I think it's a fantastic <coughs> idea to try to attract what we want. And I would be su surprised if the chamber's not interested because this, you're trying to market to these people. You know what I mean, to this group? I, uh, again, when I discussed it, you're uh, Dr. Kuznick, so we still have to have the executive board discuss it fully there. Okay. Uh, and like I said, since that time, we have seen a couple more downtown, and they are definitely talking the same language as we are right now, so it just mm -hmm. I don't think they've got the focus. Well, Frank, you sat in on that one. I, I sat in, Jeanette yeah. was in that one with <coughs> Jeff Butler. Yeah. I liked him. I thought he was... And at the IML, it was a lot of the generations, and, and so it obviously is a hot topic. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, and what they were talking about, like with the retail, uh, the brick and mortar, like we think they're all dead. Well, they're kind of coming back, and they're, and they're, with the millennials, it's an experience shopping they want. They want to come in, they want to buy clothes, and get a coffee. You know, they want experience. Come in and have yoga classes sewing classes, you know, so it's, that's the kind of retail they're looking for, so. Well, and when you start seeing, you know, Amazon, the, the brick and mortar killer, opening up a brick and mortar store downtown, and now they're opening up some smaller bookstores, it's not that it's dead, it's just, it's, it's a little bit different, it's a little smaller. Uh, that St. John office for where I work, we have a little, it was a, a home improvement kind of boutique next door, kind of like a Pier 1 sort of place, only privately owned. They're doing exactly that. They have yoga classes. They have once a month, they have a speaker come in. Right. They have after hours events where they serve drinks. They have food. They're starting to serve, like, have little fashion shows one night a month. It's it just a, a, a whole conglomeration of things as special events in the store, and they're doing pretty well. And that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm, I'm marketing. Is that if we're going to market our businesses, I think they have to do some of that. Yeah, it's not the traditional anymore. Right. Well, I would like to, do I need to make a motion to table it, or I just say I'd like to table it until next time, sure. mm -hmm. or until the next meeting. Okay. And that's the end of my report. Uh, it falls right into the Disbley Conference, which you just heard about a couple of the sessions that we went to. If any of you are interested in what sessions were down there, you can go to the uh, Illinois Municipal League website, go to the conference portion of it, and any handouts that were given out there are listed on that handout tab. There's one there which you might be interested in doing with testing and all that. Uh, I was going to run it off here, but I forgot. I put it in this box. Yeah. So if they don't flaw in that, I didn't check the box. Okay. <laughs> um, also at the Illinois School League Conference, somebody got elected to a board. He probably wasn't going to mention that, but he right. was now on IMO board directors of the Illinois School League. Okay. Congratulations. 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 Um with that and then th from there you'll be able to see what exactly what was down at the uh, sessions and all that. Is all that stuff online like it was last year? I think yes. after. it is. And there's an app too you can even download and use it right off the phone. It's still active. Oh the app is? Okay. This year they put the handouts on the website before we even got there. Yep. Where you think it's 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 so yeah, I downloaded a, a few of them. Yeah, it's, already, it's already out there. So I and, and look at what Jeff Butler, if his PowerPoint is on there, that's one of them we're really looking at strongly for the generation of speaker. He's 27 years old. I thought he was 35 or 40. Yeah. Almost fell off my chair when he said he was I caution you, there was a bad session, which was the one I went to, and there was a good session, which is the one they went to. I went to a different one. So uh, I shouldn't say bad. It was different. Not what we were looking at. It was not what uh, Creed Intermodal, Af right after the last meeting, it just so happened, uh, I ran into, I believe, the CSX representative at a meeting that I went to in Chicago. Um, not that it's dead, but as the Intermodal itself is sleeping, uh, the word that was given.
given to me, they're more inclined to have it as rail served warehousing. So it's changing. Um, not as many tracks, not as big, but rail served warehousing is what we're hearing now. Uh, once again, as rumors are, you know, but it's not really a rumor because I heard from the horse's mouth you know, himself, but didn't really elaborate, no time frame. Uh, I really don't have any information more than that. But apparently the, the intermodal has been either not going to be built, pushed back, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So project uh, I already did number three. Uh, the new pickup truck that this board approved for purchase back in May has finally arrived, correct Matt? And you're scheduled to pick it up when? Tomorrow? Wednesday. Wednesday now. Uh, so we will be making payment to Curry Motors for that uh, sometime this week. I had to transfer money from the, the accounts into the capital ticket. <coughs> it was all planned and approved by the board back in May. Also, the next two board meetings, uh, the first Tuesday, the first meeting of each month in October and November are going to be on Tuesday because of the holidays. On the holidays fall. So Tuesday, October 10th, October 9th, excuse me, is our next first meeting of the month of October. Then we'll meet on our regular fourth Monday in October. And the mayor's going to do the agenda for that one. That would be fun. And then we will meet on Tuesday, November 13th because Monday the 12th is the holiday for Veterans Day. The meeting where I'm doing the agenda plan about five minutes from the field. We have a generation speaker, so I'm like, hey, any new business coming forward? If not, I ask for a motion to adjourn to adjourn into executive session to discuss personnel. So Second. The hiring of personnel. Discuss the hiring of two public employees and possibly two part time. Who made the motion and second? I made the motion, Scott second. Don't give me that motion. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just say easy, Victor. Motion and four of those second. Any questions? Roll call. Missouri? Yes. Hazel? Yes. Wayland? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Crowd? Yes. Public works, you can say, or everybody else?